that will affect all of you in this room. If you're taking exams, you're going to take exams. So over here I have four dates. I have the current setup and the future setup over there. And I'm going to uh, just hit some highlights. Um, if we cover this in detail, we would be here for the next couple of hours talking through all this. And some of the detail is not even known yet. It's yet to be determined. So I'm going to try to hit some things I think would be of interest to you. And if you have other questions, you can do that. Uh, either in the question and answer period that follows your next presentation, or stop me later at break or in the hall. I'll be here at least through lunch. So let's, let's start with July 1st, 2017. That's pretty, pretty close. Uh, a change is being made to exams FM, financial mathematics, and MFE, models for financial economics, those two exams. What's happening? Well, the derivatives material that's currently on FM is moving to MFE. So that's the first, several, first few chapters of the McDonald textbook. That material is moving from FM to MFE. Uh, after that's, when that's moved, there's three study notes. So the, so the exam will be interest theory. Uh, out of it, there's like five textbooks that are listed. And there's three study notes that, are, that have been added. One on interest rate determinants, uh, one on interest rate swaps, and one on using duration and convexity to estimate interest rate changes. Three, and those study notes are available. You can read them now if you want. Um, and then, um, the financial economic the MFE exam, because some things have been moved over, more chapters are added in there. Some of the stuff that was at the end on stochastic calculus is being taken off. So July 1st, 2017, uh, I think there's a, I don't remember when all exam administrations are, I think there's maybe one of, uh, anyway, there's a mystery. So you have to uh, complete the exam on, if you want on the current syllabus prior to July 1st, 2017, or then you're subject to the new syllabus if you take the exam after that date. Both exams will continue as computer-based tests, CBT. Uh, it's anticipated that the FM exam will continue as CBT and immediate results. It's anticipated that uh, exam MFE will continue as CBT and not have immediate results for the first administration or two. Uh, so the questions can be calibrated. And you can ask, if you want to ask me later, you can ask why there's, why there's new stuff on FM, why isn't it delayed to talk about that if you want. So July 1st, 2017, a change. This change would have occurred without the SOA task force. It was already in play. Uh, it just happens to be convenient to talk about it here at the same time. July 1st, 2018, the requirements for associateship of the Society of Actuaries are changing. If you're a if you receive your ASA designation prior to July 1st, 2018, these apply. If you receive your ASA after that date, those apply. What does it mean to receive your ASA? It means your name. Your name must appear on the list of new ASAs that's published each month by the Society of Actuaries. So your name has to appear on the list June of 2018, May of 2018, Something prior to July 1st of 2018. Your name has to appear list. So if you take an exam in July and you don't get the results until August, that doesn't work. You have to be on the list, which means you have to complete everything soon enough to be on that list, all these, all these components. You can't say, hey, I'm really close. I'm really, really close. Give me a break. There's going to be a little, probably a little bit of uh, some kind of adjustment because of the FAP module, Fundamentals of Actual Practice. Uh, I don't know what that will be, it's just been speculation that there might be something, so uh, watch the website for, for details. Okay, so the change, ASA by July 1st, 2018, or you must complete the requirements on the other side. So I'm going to skip down here to this date, 2012, it's way out there, uh, 22, way out there, it's at 12, but 22, way, way out there, right? If you continue on to fellowship and you don't complete your fellowship by July 1st, 2022, in other words, your name doesn't appear on the list of new fellows by that date, then, you, then you're subject to this list of requirements. 
So even though you're an ASA prior, say, so you get your ASA in 2017, so you beat this, you beat this date. If you don't get the, your fellowship by July 1st, 2022, you'll have to go back and take the predictive analytics exam, or assessment, I should say exam is assessment. So this is actually a liberalization of the rules. Normally, it would apply immediately. If you got your uh, FSA after July 1st, 2018, we don't say FSA is ASA plus some things. FSA is a whole series of requirements. It just happens that you can stop partway through and get an ASA. Um, so you try to set yourself up and say, oh, I'll do something so I don't have to take predictive analytics by uh, 2018. That's fine, but just think four years later, uh, you might have to go back and take it. Just keep that in the back of your mind. I know all of you passed exams the first time, so probably it's not relevant, but um, go from there. So let's spend a, a few minutes uh, looking across, <laughs> looking across at, at the requirements. So we've got the current here, the new here. We've got all these arrows going across. And the arrows simply mean if you have credit <coughs> under the current system, that credit will transfer over to the new system without any extra effort on your part. You don't have to do anything extra, you don't have to apply for it, whatever, it just, it just transfers over. So, just so I can, it's easy for me to point to, like the fundamentals of actuarial practice, even though that may change, they may put some different material in, they may adjust things, whatever. If you've passed this module, these modules, uh, um, prior to July 1st, 2018, you got credit for it under the new, the new, the new syllabus, the new requirements. You don't have to do anything, it just transfers over. You'll notice that a couple of them are twofers. So you do pass one and you get credit for two things on the other side. That's pretty cool. Huh? So the BE applied statistics, if you have credit for it prior to July 1st, 2018, uh, you get a, a twofer on the other side. One BE and one, one exam. If you have exam C, another twofer. Uh, on, on, on the other side. We talked a little bit about validation by educational experience, what I mean by having credit for it. So there's two dates that are relevant for validation by educational experience. There's the earn date and the claim date. So the earn date is whenever, it's basically the last day of the semester or term that you earned, that you took the courses you needed to have validation by educational experience. So, for example, under applied statistics, that's time series and regression. So you maybe take two courses and whatever, you know, you pass one in the spring and one in the fall with a grade of B minus or better, that's your um, earn date. You don't, you're not required to claim it right away. I could have taken a class uh, in, in something 10 years ago, got a B minus or better and wait 20 years to claim credit for it. So what, which, which side it applies, you know, how the transfer goes is, is based on when you earned the credit uh, by taking the course, not when you claim the credit. You claim the credit later, later on. The July 1st, 2019 date is in here because for the second one of their corporate finance, accounting is being added as a subject and the, the the time period for the change is extended out one year. So you, instead of July 1st, 2018 applying, it's July 1st, 2019 for that one BE. So if you complete the corporate finance, whatever course of courses you need at your university to do that, then you're gonna have credit going across and you have uh, until July 1st, 2019. To earn it, you can claim it later, right? Earn it, claim it later. Okay, so. I think I have enough time to do a couple more things here. Let's talk a little bit about what's happening with all these. I already mentioned that accounting is being added to that to the second VEE. You also notice that there's 10 things on this side and there's 12 over there, right? There's two more. Um, bottom line, it means more work. It's probably going to take you longer to become an ASA, an associate of the Society of Actuaries, because there's two extra uh, components over here. The, uh, I mentioned the change up there, uh, apply statistics, regression time series, moving over to statistics for risk modeling, so they'll have uh, regression time series, some things on, on uh, predictive analytics, 
mathematical statistics. Maybe a lot of you have already taken that course. I know I took a two semester math stat class when I was in school. And if that professor was still alive today, I'd probably go back and find credit for it. Because if you could find the curriculum for the class, probably get credit for it. So statistics, SRM, statistics for smiling, is a new exam. Uh, the syllabus for it has not been published. Uh, for all these changes, the syllabus will be published at least six months prior to the date of the first uh, exam. Uh, so anticipate that a lot of my thing will be done uh, by the first part of 2017. Right, Jeff? Okay. Um, look at Jeff, because he's the chair of one of the groups, right? Okay. Then uh, models MFE changes to IFM. You know, just when I learned all the acronyms, now I have to learn new acronyms, right? Uh, so now MFE becomes IFM. What will happen is there will be less emphasis on derivatives and more emphasis on uh, corporate finance and investments. Not derivatives won't go away, but a different change in, in, in emphasis. MLC, which is uh, related to long-term models now, what will happen is some of the estimation techniques that were on exam C will move to the new long-term actual mathematics. Universal life coverage will move to fundamentals of actual practice. I think a little bit on uh, insurance and annuities might be added to it. So it'll be a long-term uh, coverage, actual mathematics long-term coverages, the techniques for pricing, reserving, estimation, all in that exam. Construction of actual models is going to change the most, changes the short term. Uh, right now we don't test really reserving or pricing for short-term models, so that's what's getting added. So we'll have short-term models, pricing, reserving, estimation uh, on short-term actual mathematics. The LTAM exam will continue as a written answer multiple choice combo. I know you all like that, the combos. And short term actual mathematics will start out probably as a multiple choice exam, uh, computer based tested, probably. At some, I believe the intent is at some point to make both those exams the same format. So, like they would both be multiple choice, should they both be a combo type approach to make them similar. But it's going to take a while. We don't have a the syllabus yet. These two fundamentals of actuarial practice carry straight over. Associate professionalism course, the one day uh, in person course carries over. Predictive analytics, you see up there, brand new, nothing converts over to it. You have to take it if you don't meet all the other requirements. And you look up there in the box, in that color, it says TBD, to be determined. This is the IU Actuary Board of Directors mandated that that be a project that's fully proctored. So one possible scenario, and I'm just saying this is a possible scenario, you show up in a room with your laptop, there's a proctor sitting in the room, you're given software to load onto your laptop, that software has data and other information in it, and you have a designated amount of time to complete a project based on that data. That would be one, one way to start. That's already, it's a site of where actually had a course a number of years ago where we did exactly that. Went to a, I think it was three or four days. You had instruction, you had pre-reading instruction. Then on the last day, you were given a project and you had 24 hours to complete the project. And the Society of Actuaries, when they did it originally, they thought, oh, this is great, you know, they'll work on it for a while, they'll go to their room, they'll get some sleep, then they'll work on it some more. That didn't happen. Students were spending 24 hours straight working on the project. So then they changed the rules so you got the project like in the morning, you had to turn it in in the afternoon. But it was, you were given data, you had to analyze it, write a report, and turn it in. So it's been done before that way, it could be done again. So at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Rick because I've got slightly over my time. And again, a chance to ask questions at the end. Between Jeff and I, 
Uh, Jeff at Purdue hosted the first of these uh, masks, MASCs, and I at Illinois hosted the second, and I'm pretty sure that we didn't have quite the level of uh, attire that, uh, how do you, how do you get them to dress, how did you guys, okay, no secret, just, it just, it seems like the thing to do, I guess, when you come to Chicago. Um, oh, uh, let's see. Jim has told you about the uh, Society of Actuaries. Uh, I will talk a bit about the, uh, uh, the uh, CAS, the Casual Actuarial Society. Um, yes, there's a long list of letters after my name. Don't let that intimidate you. Not that it was. Um, <laughs> actually, there is uh, another one. Uh, I'm actually an ASA. Well, Sort of. Well, when I started to work for the uh, CAS, it seemed kind of inappropriate to expect them to pay, you know, six or seven hundred bucks for uh, for the dues every year for the SOA uh, designation, and so I kind of let that. But it, it, as soon as I repay this year's uh, uh, dues, as soon as I catch up on the on the payment, uh, I can put that back in there. So. Um, uh, I didn't think about that. Um, it's uh, just one of those things I'm trying to be politically correct. Actually, it's pretty much the only time I've tried to be politically correct in the last, uh, my entire life. Um, <laughs> so that's, um, that's, that's not going to happen. So I have to do, okay. Just hit enter. Oh. Oh, that's what, oh, okay, so that'll work. I see. Gotcha, thank you. Hmm. So those are the things I'd like to uh, uh, talk about today. Uh,